Hi, everybody. Thanks for joining us today. Today, we are going to be talking about buyers. Who are they? How do you get them? How do you keep them? How do you make them buy something? Okay. Um, so the topic at the, the first topic today is going to be, how do you get them? So I know when you're brand new, uh, and even sometimes when you're not brand new, but you're maybe having a little bit of a slump, um, it's good to go back and revisit sort of your list of how you get buyers. Sometimes I like to go back and I'll look at past transactions of mine and remind myself, how did I get these people? How did I start working with them? So what we're going to go over today are just a little short list of about 10 ways in which you can find buyers and start working with them as a buyer's agent. So the first one is very easy. Wear your realtor pen. You would think I would have mine on right this minute um, because that's the, that's the topic I'm doing. I will share with you uh, some very cool to me stuff. My y'all probably know that my, um, that my grandparents were both real estate agents and my great grandfather was a real estate agent. So my dad gave me my granddad's realtor pin. So this is a national association of realtors pin that recognizes that my grandfather is a Virginia association of realtors past president. So true story. He was a VAR president one year. Um, I believe it was 1964. And this is his realtor pin that he was given for his lapel to be able to wear, um, to recognize his volunteer service he did for VAR, being their president one year. Um, so that is pretty cool. Um, I also have a couple other pins that belong to him. Um, so just simply wearing your pin, wearing your realtor pin when you go to a PTA meeting, wearing your realtor pin when you go to a family reunion. Um, that R is going to remind people that you do real estate. If they know the realtor logo, they're gonna recognize that and go, oh my gosh, I totally forgot that Ashley does real estate. Now, if they don't recognize the realtor R, then what it could do is it could be a talking point. So they could say, hey, what's that pin you're wearing? Awesome. Now I'm not that obnoxious person at the party who's constantly running around trying to turn the conversation to real estate. They've just asked me. So now I have the perfect opportunity to say, oh, actually I'm a real estate agent. Like I've been selling real estate for 18 years and it's a family business and blah, 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 blah. Whatever you, whatever your, you know, your, your talking points are about the fact that you do real estate. So it just gives a physical reminder that you're in real estate and or it can make curious people ask questions about it and it gives you an opportunity to chat with them about it, okay? Um, winter time is oftentimes easier because you can just clip it to your jacket and just leave it on your jacket all winter long. It's hard for me to remember to take it off and put it back on every day on the clothes I'm wearing. I try to make a point uh, that if I'm doing anything real estate related, I'm gonna put it on, uh, but that's probably the opposite way of thinking I should be doing, right? Like if I'm going to go do a real estate thing, all those people know I'm a real estate agent because I do real estate. I should probably be putting it on anytime I'm not going to go do something real estate related. So um, just think about that one. Open houses. Y'all have heard me say this a million times. I say it a million times because it works. If you're not working open houses, you're missing an opportunity to meet customers that could potentially turn into clients. So this is called speculative work, um, meaning you're speculating on whether you're going to be able to get any leads from it or not. Okay. Um, it costs very little money. Now you will hear me say this a million times as well. Back in the day, it cost about 200 bucks to run an ad in the local newspaper to let people know for two days that you were having an open house. That was a barrier. It was a financial barrier for new agents to be able to go out and try to find buyers. That barrier no longer exists. If I spend $10 on a sponsored ad or a boosted post regarding an open house I'm having, uh, 10 bucks is, is nothing. Um, so it now is just extremely inexpensive to boost your open house post or create a sponsored ad or a sponsored event um, and boost that event to the local um, area 
and have people come out to your open house. So there is truly no financial barrier anymore for hosting these open houses. And then if you consistently work open houses every Saturday or every Sunday for a year, I guarantee you, you're going to have 50 people at least in your sphere of influence now, in your database now that you would not have had otherwise. And if 10% of those people convert into a, an actual uh, buyer, then you're going to have lots of business that you would not have had if you had not been spending two hours um, holding an open house or three hours holding an open house. And if you are like me and you don't like to sit still, I oftentimes use those as an opportunity, those open houses as an opportunity to catch up on sorting my email, tagging my email, um, maybe writing note cards. You know, we had a, a, a quick tool email several months ago and it was about a traveling note writing kit. You know, um, I have a, a, a box full of stationery that I can just grab and go. And um, possibly I have a Harry Potter lap desk. Uh, that I use for the same purpose. And I can just knock out five note cards, thank you notes, congratulations on the new puppy, those types of things, wherever I am, okay? Um, so working open houses can be like a multitasker's dream. You know, you're getting to meet clients and you're also able to take that time to go through your um, email and get it cleaned up. Referrals, referrals obviously, obviously are a, uh, big source of business for agents. I have found the most effective time to ask for referrals from your current clients is when you've gone out and you've looked at houses all afternoon and they didn't find the one that they wanted. What I found is that psychologically they're feeling badly that they've just quote unquote wasted your day and wasted your time because they didn't find the house they wanted. So you've shown them five houses. They, none of them work for them. They're psychologically feeling a little bit indebted to you that you have spent your time and energy on them and it has not resulted in a sale or a payday for you. So that is the perfect time to say, Hey guys, you know what? I know we're going to find it. Let's go out again this week if one hits the market. But in the meantime, would you do me a favor? You know, you know, obviously working with buyers and sellers is how I make my living. If you hear anybody, you know, on a Zoom call this week or you hear anybody in the office talk about real estate um, or if you hear somebody complain about their house being too small to homeschool all their kids, would you just mention me and let them know that I'd be happy to chat with them about selling their house or helping them find a house? Now, what you've done is you have given them special instructions to find you some business. And you've, you've suggested that at a time where they're feeling uh, perhaps a little bit badly that they didn't result in a sale for you. So um, that is when I have found is the perfect time to ask for referrals. The other, the other additional great time to ask for referrals is as soon as you finish closing on a house with them. And then you can say, hey guys, it was a great transaction. I am so honored that you trusted me to handle all of this. I know it's a huge, huge um, uh, decision as to who to use. And I'm so honored that you would pick me. Um, and if you wouldn't mind, would you mind recommending me to a couple of friends or family? And that's another time to just ask for the referral and specifically ask for it. I think a lot of times we go through our business and we just think that if we do a good job, people will talk about us. Maybe. But I'll tell you this, they don't give me reviews unless I send them an email saying, hey, would you mind reviewing me, right? They just don't. One time in 18 years did somebody just on their own go on to Zillow and make a review about me. Just one time. Um, otherwise, uh, now I am fortunate enough to have Rebecca Hartley doing transaction management for me. And so she sends an email out with a realtor.com link and a Zillow link and asks for reviews. So now all of a sudden I got reviews coming out everywhere. You know why? Because we're asking for them. Um, I can't be passive about it any longer. I can't think, okay, I did a great job for them. I'm sure they'd say nice things about me. I'm sure they will spontaneously think I should go online and review Ashley for this. They just don't, they don't think that way. I don't. I picked up a great dinner last night. I ate it. It was delicious. Uh, 
I didn't, it did not occur to me to go online to the restaurant and leave a review. Just didn't occur to me. Now, if they were to send me an email today and say, hey, thanks for stopping by last night and picking up dinner. We hope you enjoyed it. Would you consider leaving us a review? I, I would. Um, so it, it's time early on in your career to recognize that it's no one else's job to build up your brand. It is your job to build up your brand, okay? Um, other ideas are volunteer at events in your community. So if there is an event going on, why not volunteer? Wear your realtor pin, get yourself a real estate t-shirt that you wear to these events or a hat. You know, my dad has a baseball cap. Um, what does it say, Jennifer? Do you remember? It's something, some catchy, I'm a real estate agent slogan. You got that at one of the conventions or something. Yeah, and I can't remember what it says, but it is. So a RVAR sells the realtor logo hats, um, and it's really handy for when it's raining. I have a couple of those. Um, they're not very expensive. And it is an attention grabber. People ask. Mm -hmm. So get your hat. I can't get humid hair under a hat. You have too much hair. Yes. My hair is very thin. <laughs> But you're absolutely right and get a realtor t-shirt or, or something realtor related that you can wear um, that, and there are some dynamite cute ones out there now um, that says, you know, like real estate and tacos run my life. You know, there are lots of things you can buy that have some whimsy um, that you can wear when you go to volunteer at these events. So that is a feel good effort. You know, you're helping out with something in your community and you're also building up your brand as well and Aaron has a question yes Aaron I'm looking for some cute t-shirts are there certain websites that you guys recommend Etsy has a million um they really do anybody else have a suggestion anybody else know where there might be a good source for t-shirts for real estate related t-shirts there was a few on Amazon but I do like Etsy because you are supporting small business so, right. Yeah. And if you are one of those people who kind of does your own um, t shirt making, um, then Etsy also has downloadable things for like your Cricut machine or whatever. So, that's also a really easy way to have somebody else go ahead and do the graphic for you. And you can uh, just download it and do it yourself. That was me in a past life. That is not me anymore. Um, now, how about passing out business cards? Listen, y'all, I go back and forth on this and I'll go on a good run where I'm passing out business cards and then I'll go three months and not pass out a business card or more embarrassingly enough, someone will ask me for one and I don't have one. There is no quicker way to display how you are not the person for the job than to not have a business card when someone asks you for one. So please put them everywhere. Um, you can buy these little business card holders that are thin little aluminum snap business card holders. Buy 10 of those suckers, stick 20 cards in each one of them and put one in your glove box of every car. Put one in each one of your handbags. Put one on your dresser or your front door uh, table so that you can just grab it on the go. Put them everywhere. Put them in your gym bag. Put them in everything. Um, because I have absolutely been that person and it is super embarrassing, right? Um, and it just displays that you maybe are not uh, the professional they need to be using if you literally don't even have a business card on you. So now, if you're walking the green way and you're in some yoga pants and a t-shirt, I get it. But, you know, there are times where <laughs> I'm showing a for sale by owner and the for sale by owner is like, hey, can I get your business card? and I realize I'm out of them. So it would be great if you just kept extras on hand. If you're buying them, here's a quick tip. If you're buying them on Vistaprint, order the minimum number, and within 10 seconds of placing that order, a pop-up is gonna happen, and it's gonna say, would you like to double your order for you know $3 or something completely ridiculous? Um, and then you can double your order for less money. Then take that extra box you weren't expecting to buy and throw it in the trunk of your car, just so that when you do run out, you, you can replenish right then and there, okay? Um, all right, moving on. Send birthday cards, anniversary cards, um, 
to your sphere, to your sphere of influence. So when I was on Facebook this morning, I noticed that some of my past clients just got their first puppy dog. So I am going to pick up a little doggy toy or a little bag of doggy treats from somewhere and I'm going to drop it on the front porch. And I'm just going to say, you know, congratulations on the new pupper. And I'm just going to sign it as me. I'm not necessarily going to brand it as me, the real estate agent, um, but I am going to put it on the front porch. The only reason why I would say go ahead and brand it as yourself is when I did mums as a pop by this past, um, like in September, at least five of my past clients put a picture of the mum with my card on social media and tagged me in it. So I'm going back and forth about this whole dog treat thing. I may, I may or may not brand it to me as the real estate agent. We'll see. Um, now, if I'm doing something big, like delivering 30 mums around town, then I'm certainly going to brand that because it really is a pop by. Now this dog treat is a pop by too. So uh, most likely I'm leaning towards uh, branding it to myself, but we'll see. Um, but that's just a very easy way for me to maintain that, that relationship with those clients. They already gave me a great review online. I'm sure they do tell people when people ask. Um, but if I can drop this dog toy off on the front porch and congratulate them on the new puppy, um, that's just one more way I'm able to engage with them in a really authentic way. And it'll give me a little bit of bragging rights from them when they say, oh my gosh, the sweetest thing just happened. Our realtor dropped by, you know, a, a chew toy for the new puppy. And I may decide to be clever and write something like, here's hoping they chew on this instead of your beautiful new house, you know, whatever. Um, additionally, you can send out birthday cards, anniversary cards, whatever you want to send out. You guys, when you've been with us long enough, you'll see that we do that for y'all. You know, we send you guys a birthday card. We send you a happy Wainwright anniversary card. It's because we want to engage with you. It's because we want to celebrate those milestones. We want you to know that we, the staff, are thinking about you, right? Um, it's why we make posts on social media about your anniversaries with Wainwright. We want you to know that we recognize you and that you're a valuable part of our family. Um, so doing that, when you see those things pop up on Facebook, Facebook has made it very easy to stay up to date on everyone's lives past the transaction. It was very difficult pre-Facebook to know what was going on with your past clients um, because we just didn't have that portal to their lives like we do now. So use it. Um, again, just riffing off of that idea, just keeping in touch with past clients. Send notes, small gifts, whatever, you know, whatever suits you. Um, canvassing the neighborhood surrounding a listing or a company listing. This up there with open houses, this is my other number one idea for when you come into the business and you have no business, how to very, very quickly be up and running with business. So if you get a new listing, you should absolutely be walking a two to four block radius handing out flyers about the new listing. Even if you think that house is gonna sell in 24 hours, you should be doing this because what you're trying to do is you're trying to generate leads. So when you walk around the neighborhood with a flyer about your new listing, you are received much more warmly. You're not cold calling on these houses, you're warm calling on these houses because you're there with a purpose and you're there to provide them something of value. You're there to say, Hey, I uh, don't want to take up too much of your time, but I'm just dropping off a flyer about your neighbor's house I just listed. If you want an opportunity to pick your own neighbor, please share this flyer. You know, pass it out to anybody who you know who you might like to have as a neighbor, okay? Um, and then get out of there. You know, if you want to follow up with them the next week, even better. When you have a price reduction on a house, that's another great opportunity to go walk that neighborhood again and say, hey guys, just dropping off another flyer. We've actually reduced the price. We have a new price on the house around the corner um, or we're having an open house. I'd love to have you invite anybody who you know who might be interested in seeing the house to come to the open house. Um, back in the day when we had a buyer's market, not a seller's market. I used to recommend have an open house just for the neighborhood. 
invite only the neighborhood to this open house. Everybody wants to see in their neighbor's house, especially if it's one of those neighborhoods where the houses are like A, B, C, and they're very similar to each other. There are only three different styles in the whole subdivision. Uh, people want to see, how'd you use that funky space in the upstairs hallway? You know, people want to see that. Um, so if you are going to canvas the neighborhood, um, just make sure your mindset is that you hope you see people. Sometimes the mindset is, okay, I'm going to go hand out flyers in that neighborhood and oh my gosh, I hope nobody's home. Like, I don't even know what I'm going to say if I actually, if somebody answers the door. Flip your mindset around and remind yourself, the only way I'm going to make money is if I talk to people. And I say this to my children all the time when they see me taking phone calls and they see me talking to people and I say, listen, I'm paid to talk. That's what I'm paid to do. I am paid to communicate and to convey communication to the other parties. That is what I'm paid to do. So if you're not talking, you're not making money. You've got to create relationships. You've got to talk with people. And some of that, if it doesn't come naturally to you, uh, it does to me, obviously. Um, I most certainly got talks too much on every report card my entire life. Um, moving me did not help the matter at all. So if you do not naturally gravitate towards being chatty, just keep reminding yourself, you are paid to talk. That is what you need to make sure you're doing every single day. Um, that's how you generate new business. So if you do not have a listing and you would like to do this, Look on the hot sheet, look on the company listings. You can go to Flex MLS and pull up company listings. Put them on a map. Look and see if there's one that resonates with you. Maybe you have a friend who used to live in the neighborhood. Maybe your aunt lives over there. And if it has a particular draw to you or the kitchen is similar to your kitchen, call that listing agent, call that Wainwright agent and say, hey, would you mind, I'm trying to generate some new business because I'm new, would you mind if you're not farming that area? And that's what that's called. It's called farming. If you're not farming that area, would you mind if I printed out some flyers about your property with my information on it and walk them around the neighborhood? Now, if an agent called me and asked that, first, I'd have a pang of guilt because I know I, I'm supposed to be doing that. But guess what? I'm not doing that. You know, I should be. I'm not. Um, a little bit because I'm also running a firm. But a pang of guilt would come over me and then I think, absolutely, you go do it. Go work an open house for me, go share flyers, whatever you wanna do. I'm working for the seller anyway. Um, and so I would be wholeheartedly cheerleading anyone's attempt to go farm a neighborhood where I have a new listing. So don't let not having your own listing be a barrier to that. Instead, take a look at the company listings, pick a couple that you think you could walk around the neighborhood and sell and then ask the listing agent if you may do that, okay? Um, and again, stop me if you have any questions or anything to add about any of these. I'm happy to pause and we can chat about that. I'll just say blame it on me. Jennifer says you have to be in the office. You can't be walking around your neighborhoods farming, yeah, that's Ashley. True. Jennifer won't let me farm anything. Sorry. <laughs> she wants me at my desk. Okay. Uh, I got a question. Yeah, Deepak. The listing I did, and I, I mean, I did a couple of houses to take flyers. Well, come to find out, they weren't really. Uh, I guess the my they had some conflicts between them too. Then I just stopped after two houses. I like, I don't know if I want to do this. You know, you try to yeah. They're like, well, well, thank you, but you know, blah blah blah. You know, they got a little upset. They had conflicts they with the seller of your listing. Yeah, in the previous, like where they stayed. Oh, and neighborhood like, drama. Oh, yeah, I was like, okay. I stopped after two. I was like, okay. Ooh, I'm not I never thought about that. that. <laughs> Neighborhood drama. Never yeah. thought about that. I was like, okay, go right. Never mind. I'm not going any further. I got back in my car and left. You should be proud of yourself, though, Deepak. That means they wanted to open up to you and chat. So right. yeah. I just, you know, it just it was so awkward. I mean, I just stood there and listened. I'm like, I don't want to say anything. Keep my mouth shut. Don't say a word. Listen. Farming is full of awkward moments, right? Um, it for sure is, but you have to remember that's true in any sales, you know? Um, if you're selling televisions, there are gonna be some awkward engagements, right? 
if you're selling cars, there's going to be some weird, awkward engagements, right, you know, right. um, it definitely happens. Okay. So let's talk about buying leads. So I have bought leads for a decade, probably. Um, it's good. It's bad. It's frustrating. It's profitable. Um, there are some awkward things that come from it. Um, ultimately, I calculate my ROI, my return on investment on my leads every year. I just let a um, full um, package of leads in Salem go. I just decided not to renew them. They weren't, they were underperforming. They were too expensive and underperforming. Um, so I have changed my, what I want out of my lead generation products over the years. Um, it has to do with what I'm, where I am in my business, right? Um, and it has to do more with the leads. Are they performing? Are they profitable? If they're not, um, I'm trying something else. So um, you can buy leads from realtor.com. You can buy leads from Zillow. You can buy leads from Bold Leads. There are all sorts of lead companies. Andrea just brought up Bold Leads to me a couple of weeks ago. I'd never even heard of them. There are all sorts of people willing to sell you leads. Um, what is important is making sure that you're going to get quality leads. Now, what do I mean by quality leads? I mean that at least one out of 10 to 15 to 20 of those leads is gonna actually end up being a converted buyer or seller, okay? Um, obviously, when you're working leads, they are cold, cold, frozen leads. They are not warmed up. They are maybe working with a realtor already, maybe not. They may actually be a realtor um, because that has happened um, where folks click a button online uh, and they are a real estate agent and they're just trying to figure out how that button works, okay? Um, I have paid for many a lead that is a real estate agent trying to figure out where their listing leads are going to. Well, they're going to me. Those buyer leads on your listing are going to me because I'm paying Zillow or Realtor.com to put them with me. And so, Ashley will politely explain how that button works to those agents. Yes, yes I will. And, and beg them to please stop pushing that button. <laughs> that they're going to get me every time. That unless they want to pay Realtor.com or Zillow, that button will never take customers to them. Because why in the world would Zillow or Realtor.com give that away? Um, they are, of course, going to be paid for that. So um, if you have questions about leads, you're welcome to talk to me and Jennifer. Jennifer's done Zillow for years and years. I've done Realtor.com forever. Um, we also have OpCity. OpCity is another lead generation um, company. So there are lots and lots of options. Um, many are good. Most of them are just a mixed bag. You know, um, the best source of business, honestly, are referrals. So truly, lead generation needs to be part of your repertoire of where you're getting business. You should be doing open houses, farming and canvassing, talking to people all the time, sending out notes and emails based off of information you gather on Facebook, and perhaps buying some leads, right? If it, what I have found is people who only want to buy leads and don't want to do anything else, they're generally a shy person. And so buying leads makes more sense to them because there's less um, of the salesman-y part of trying to generate leads uh, yourself. So I would just challenge you that it's very expensive to only buy leads, very expensive. Um, you can work open houses and feel awkward and get lots of free leads. So just try to look at it as a cost um, comparison versus feeling awkward comparison, right? There is a trade-off there. So um, how about social media involvement? I highly recommend you join lots of groups on Facebook. Tailor those memberships to your interests. It is very authentic 
that if I am interested in sewing to belong to a sewing group on Facebook and contribute and participate in there. And then if someone in the group is asking about real estate or real estate comes up, it's very natural for me then to say, hey, I'm a real estate agent. I'm happy to give you some free advice, right? Now, that's going to make sense and seem authentic because I've been participating and involved in that Facebook group, okay? I'm not a runner. If I joined some marathon Facebook group, never participated, never contributed, but every once in a while when the when I only participate, it's it's to tout my business, that's gonna seem inauthentic and that's not going to go over very well. So join Facebook groups, just like you would in real life, join groups that are about topics you're interested in. But go ahead and join five or six Facebook groups. It can be a yard sale group. It can be a sewing group. It can be a racquetball group. It can be whatever it is you want it to be. Join some Facebook groups and be engaged and active in those groups, okay? I know, who has the time? I get it. But you're gonna be on Facebook anyway. You might as well be on Facebook in a way that might generate business for yourself, right? Um, sponsored ads on Facebook, boosted posts, those are all great ideas, truly. Um, tinker around with what gets you the best results. Um, what you're really trying to do, I belong to a couple of Facebook groups that people are sharing what they're successful with in their social media posts. And what I keep seeing all the time is it's all about getting a hundred or more comments. That's what you're looking for. You're looking for engagement where you're going to have a hundred or more comments. Um, somebody was sharing a couple of days ago on this group that she had done a poll on Facebook, artificial tree versus real tree. And she at that point was at like 120 comments. Now she's in there. She's thanking people for their participation. She's playing devil's advocate. She's in there letting her personal preference known. Um, so she's working that comment section, if you will. And people are in there tagging their friends. Um, so that's the kind of engagement you're looking for. Um, and that's what the, the folks who do this successfully are sharing on these Facebook groups that, that that's what you're looking for. You're looking where the business is happening is in the comment section. So just posting to be posting is not terribly effective in bringing business to you. It's posting in a way that creates engagement where people are going to actually have something to say in the comment section. Okay. Um, Videos on your social media about local businesses. Why in the world not? Um, you know, uh, one of our agents at the firm, she highlights a local business every month on her Facebook business page. That is lovely, you know, especially in a time like now. You know, I was telling Jennifer, I had a closing yesterday and I like to do a basket called, these are the people in your neighborhood, if you know the uh, Sesame Street reference. All that means is my gift basket to my client at closing is going to be gift certificates and products from a local business that is located close to their new neighborhood because I want them to get to know the people in their neighborhood. So last, last night I did my first one from Burger on the Square. So I did a really cute basket of two bottled Coca-Colas, two bags of individual Lay's potato chips, a menu, and a $100 gift card to Burger in the Square. Guess what, Burger in the Square was thrilled for me to come get a $100 gift card from them. It felt good on my end, felt good on their end, and when I gave the gift basket to my client, he said, because he's moving to Southwest County, he said, hey, I ate there last night. I had an awesome burger. Yay, that felt really good, and I was able to support a local business. So even if you're not buying from those businesses, showcase those businesses. Listen, I should have taken a picture of myself taking, getting the gift card at Burger in the Square and then made a social media post about it. I should have done that. Y'all be better than me. That's what I should have done. And I could have turned that into three or four pieces of social media content, right? Yes, Jennifer, were you gonna add something? I will just say if Burger in the Square knew what you were doing, so just having a conversation, hey, I'm getting this for a closing gift for somebody yeah. that just bought a house in the area. Burger in the Square is gonna remember that. Yep. One, you just spent $100 at their business, and that's huge for small mom and pops. Mm -hmm. um, and they're going to remember you. 
yep. for doing that. You're absolutely right. Have that conversation when you're getting it. Yep. Lots of breweries now are doing the thing where you can buy a beer for somebody and they write it up on the chalkboard. That's another, have you ever seen that? That is super cool. And so people come into the brewery and they look and it may be like an EMT worker, um, a librarian, that kind of thing. But also it can be specific people's names. So there's an idea too, you know, of course, obviously make sure that they um, like going to breweries, but you could buy a beer in their name and they're up on the chalkboard until they come in and get the beer. And people say, hey, Jim, I saw you're on the board. You've got a beer at the brewery to go redeem. I do? Like, and it can be from their realtor, you know? Um, so there are some cool ideas that make people feel special that you also can spin into social media marketing ideas as well. Um, any questions about that? That's my last, like, how to find buyers tip. Um, I could go on with like 20 more, but I wanna give you enough that I don't overwhelm you, but hopefully inspire you to try something new. Um, anybody have any input, questions, things they've been doing that works for them? Please, I'd love for you to share. I know it takes a minute to unmute that unmute button. Okay, give me a shout out if you have something to share. Otherwise, my last piece today is my get business quick idea. And this was Jennifer's idea today. Um, is the follow-up note. If you have had a meeting with someone, if you have talked about real estate in any way, if you served on a committee with them and um, you know liked having that interaction, like I just wrote a thank you, a thank you note. Uh, it's going out. This is to another broker in town. He served for the last two years as the broker council appointee on the board of directors. I'm sending him a thank you note for volunteering and providing that service. And I'm doing that because I like to be a nice person. But ways in which that could help me, that's building rapport with that other broker. In my line of business, I need a good rapport with other brokers because do you have any idea how many times we brokers have to get on the phone because a deal's going sideways and our agents are tearing their hair out and don't know what to do? So I need to build rapport with the other brokers in town. You guys need to build rapport with other agents in town because you never know when you're in a multiple offer situation, right? And they go, you know what? I remember serving on a committee with Deepak or I remember having a past transaction with Deepak. He was a delight, very professional. We hit a hiccup in there and he handled it quickly and effectively. Um, and that is what is going to give you the edge when you're in a multiple offer situation later. So I just closed on a transaction with another agent and another firm. She sent me a thank you note. She just said, hey, thanks for the smooth transaction. It was a pleasure working with you. She's not going to get any more business out of that from me. I'm not going to use her as an agent, you know, but what she's doing is she is recognizing that we worked a great transaction together and thanking me. And later we may end up in another transaction situation again, and she's gonna remember that we worked that great transaction. I'm gonna remember that she thanked me afterwards, and she may choose me in a multiple offer situation down the road. Now, that's just within our own industry. Follow-up notes on everything. If you worked on a PTA project with somebody, or you worked at the local, um, animal hospital with someone, send them a note and just tell them how much you enjoyed working with them, right? Even just a Facebook message, even because perhaps you don't have their email or their phone number, but you can send them a Facebook message and just tell them, hey, I loved working on Saturday at Angels of Assisi with you, you know, hope to run into you again. Well, they're gonna perhaps then go stalk your Facebook page and see that you're a real estate agent. So all of it is just you have an excuse now to be the person you know your grandmother told you you should be and write notes to people, okay? That's all I have for you guys today. Anybody have any questions?